Hello everyone, in this video I want to walk you through how to complete an assignment in the virtual machine labs. Um, there is a lot of information uh, guiding you through this process or already available through MindTap and I'll point you to a couple resources, but I thought I'd walk you through the first initial steps um, in the one in particular that I've assigned just to kind of get you started. Um, so go ahead to the learning modules. and click on part two. So at this point, I'm assuming you've read my email uh, and you know that I've added this assignment to part two. Um, I do know you have the lab simulations already. There are two of them for this section and those are pretty quick to complete. The virtual lab machine lab is a little bit longer, but I wanted to um, get this one out there to you guys because I found it to be somewhat easy and doable, uh, not too many steps. So if you scroll down through the assignments, you'll see I added it right here. And uh, I did highlight this, once you begin the lab, you have to see it through. Uh, you can't stop in the middle, it will not remember where you left off. Remember, when you're working on these virtual labs, you are connecting uh, to servers, machines, via the internet uh, so you are actually turning on machines and activating and going through certain steps um, so you can't just leave in the middle walk away and then come back so you should expect to set aside about an hour to complete it um, the other thing I added is this video on PKI components. Again, it's not a required assignment to complete for a grade, but I found it to be um, very helpful. So uh, it just provides a little more information from, from what you're reading in unit four. And then finally, the discussion for part two. Okay, so normally you would just click here and it'll take you into MindTab directly to this assignment, but I wanted to see what you have available to you through MindTab. Okay, so I already have this window open. This is the MindTab dashboard, as you know. And if you just go over here, um, getting started with live virtual machine labs video series, click on that to expand that section. You'll see overview of live virtual machine labs, exploring the virtual machine lab interface, etc. There's more. Uh, I would recommend you take a look at this first video, Overview of Live Virtual Machine Labs. They go ahead and explain what you're actually doing by connecting to these machines remotely. Um, so they explain the process and, and how to get started. Now I'm going to navigate down to the assignment itself and show you how to start. So in part two, again, if you use the link right from Blackboard, it'll launch the activity. and It'll take you directly into the assignment. But it's right here, Unit 3 Live Virtual Machine Labs. And it's called 3-1 Encryption and Hashing. Click on that. It'll take a minute. But it launches the assignment. Start assignment now and okay so this is the dashboard that you'll see when you enter in a virtual lab. Um, on the left hand side it's telling me I already have this assessment in progress that means that uh, I already started this. I'm just going to click on take me back but it just will start me over from the beginning. As I said, you can't leave in the middle. Um, this gray bar in the middle shows you all the different machines that you have available to you. And as you can see, this first one, PLAB DC01, is um, turning on. So that's why you see this busy with the blue bar. And so that is in the process of actually turning on. And then finally on the right, this is the screen that you'll see that is um, the uh, monitor of the machine that you're working with. So it opens to this select your lab guide. And basically that is just telling you to open up the instructions. So if you go back to the left, 
This is the Select Your Lab guide, but really if you just stay on this tab, it's the one that pertains to the assignment you're on. So it's just best to just stay where it opens you uh, up to. And then you have additional features and settings. You can change some other things about it. Uh, but how to begin. Make sure you read through all the items on the left. These are all your instructions, um, exam objectives, and if you scroll down further, it gives you a diagram of the lab. These are the different machines you'll be working with. Notice their names, P Lab, DC, P Lab, DM, etc. If you scroll down a little further, it tells you which ones you need for this assignment, these two right here, and it tells you what they are. So the first one is a Windows Server domain controller. The second one runs Windows 10. It is a domain member. So imagine that's just uh, a machine connected to the, the network. So again, go to the gray bar in the center and you see that the domain controller is on. When I hover my mouse over it, I get to see all of this. Power off, reboot, reset, etc. So it's on. I'm not going to do anything more to it. The next one I need to turn on is the one that I saw in the list, PLAB Win 10. So we're going to be using Windows 10, and it's right here, PLAB Win 10. If I just click on this, it should, nope, here we go, power on. Just click on that, and it'll turn on. Now, you could go through the process of turning on all of these, but for this lab in particular, um, it tells me right on the left that these are the only two I need for this one. So that's all I'm going to work with. In the meantime, while that's turning on, this here, you can close this window. It just takes up space. Okay. Most important thing to figure out where you are. What I found is that when I'm working at home on my laptop, because the screen is small, uh, I'm limited in my view. So I have to be very careful with making sure that I'm working with the right machine. Right here it says PLAB DC01. So that's how you know what you're working with. Um, if you have an opportunity to, uh, I would recommend you use the machines at school. Again, you don't have to. It just has a large screen. They have larger screens than working on a laptop. It just makes your life a little easier, that's all. Okay, so now, scroll down in the instructions. And that was the first page. I'm completed with reading through the first page of instructions. Click to the next. And it says, exercise one, cryptographic basics. Take the time to read through all of this. I know we're terrible about reading through details. Everybody likes to skim because there's just so much text sometimes. But take the time to read through. And then you'll find task one, step one. Here we will install the tool and prepare to use it to learn more about cryptographic basics. So it does try to walk you through every step but there are some little mistakes that you may make that um, will then just confuse the heck out of everything. So take a look at this one, for example. Ensure you have powered the required devices indicated in the introduction, then connect to PLAB Windows 10. So here's PLAB Windows 10, but this is not PLAB Windows 10. So what you must do is click on it here. And is it doing it for me? There, a double click. And we give it a minute. And now you know that you're working with the right machine. Okay, and it tells you the desktop is displayed. Yes, it is. I'm looking good. Step two, open Internet Explorer. The default homepage is the Practice Labs intranet. I'm going to go over here and open up Windows Explorer, or Internet Explorer, rather. Okay. Um, the instructions then say to go to Tools, then to Hacking Tools folder. So here, notice we have the scroll bar here. And again, I'm still in Mind Tap, so you're seeing all of this on the right. You, know, you just have to be careful what, what you're looking at and 
um, where you are. But click on Tools. And then on Hacking Tools. So depending on your internet connection, you could be running pretty smoothly or this could be taking a while. And scroll down to the next set of instructions. At the beginning of the Hacking Tools page, you will find the zipped program. Save CryptoDemo.zip to the Downloads folder. So here's CryptoDemo.zip. Click. Do you want to open or save? I'm going to say save. And now before you do anything else, don't start clicking away. Make sure you go and read what the next step is. It says navigate to the downloads folder. Right click on the zip document. Click extract all. Okay, so open folder. Right click. Extract all. Okay, and click the extract button. Okay, so I think the default folder is fine. We don't need to browse. Click on extract. Okay, this is where I'm going to leave you. Uh, I think you have enough information just to get started. As I said before, make sure you set aside about an hour to work on this task and um, expect to at some point have to provide screenshots and it gives you the information to do that. Let me just see if there's an example in this page here. Uh, it provides all the functionality so it's just a click of a button here in the instructions. Yeah right here I just saw it. Where'd it go? Okay, so in this one here, if I wanted to take a screenshot, it's just click of a button and it does it for you. Okay, so in order to get credit for completion, you'll see their number one screenshot. It'll tell you what you need to do. This one in particular has several screenshots and it has about four or five multiple choice questions at the end, so look out for those. Um, I would like some feedback on how you did. I want to know if you were successfully able to get through the whole thing, uh, if it was particularly slow for you, for you, if you did it from home and you had any trouble at all. I would like to know all of that. Uh, any feedback you have is welcome because, as I said before, I would like to assign some of these going forward, and I know they're a little more involved than the um, lab simulations. Okay, that should be enough to get started. Email me if you have any issues.